respected uh, Professor Srinivasan, Dr. Major Nagaraju, IAP ID Chapter functionaries, Tamil Nadu TNSC Charter, President at Ismail, Rajendran Secretary, and then Dr. Kopal Treasurer, and all my dear friend, Dr. Sudhagar, and uh, all the faculty has come all over from India. Welcome you all. I just start this program, Fever with thrombo <clears throat> Thrombocytopenia, or are not dengue. See, this is a very common and major problem a general pediatrician will come across, fever and thrombocytopenia. So, but it, it comprises of a lot of underlying etiology, maybe a simple benign illness like a viral fever associated with some spurious thrombocytopenia or something in maternal to be leukemia. So, with a proper approach, we can definitely reach a diagnosis. That's what we are going to discuss in the next 17 or 18 minutes. So, to begin any good program, you should have a divine darshan. So, let us have a divine darshan of the live cells of blood. You can see RBC and beautiful platelets, violet color dots, beautiful platelets. And the bigger aura you show you there is the uh, immature platelets, which is giant platelets, which is immature but more energetic platelets. This is a referral letter from one of the pediatricians from a rural town. Here he was referring this boy 10 years old with five days fever and the platelet count of 55,000. So this is the reference letter of a pediatrician from a small rural town. But definitely will help in narrowing down the differential diagnosis, but it is grossly inadequate because from the general data, we have to go into the focus history and probability examination, laboratory, which may be basic laboratory as well as the specific investigation, differential diagnosis, then only we can reach a diagnosis. This cannot be a shortcut. All the time, we cannot make a shortcut from this. These are some of the numbers related to thrombocytopenia. Normal count is 150,000 to 400,000 per microliter. Practical cutoff is less than 10,000, less than 100,000. Usually, they are remain asymptomatic till the count goes below 50,000. Clinically, they'll definitely become symptomatic when the count goes below 20,000. If falling trend is more significant than one single value, it causes petechiae, purpura, and mucoviditis bleeding. If you look at the causes of thrombocytopenia, it's quite large, but we can group them into three categories, increased destruction, impaired production, and sequestration. If you narrow down them into practical common causes, commonly, these are the common causes and acute fever thrombocytopenia, pseudothrombocytopenia, viral illness, secondary dengue, COVID, EBV, parvovirus, chikungunya, HIV, sepsis, and then um, scrub typhus yeah, among the bacteria, malaria, leukemia, HLH and LCH, and hemorrhoidic syndrome. Very rarely, drugs given during fever may also cause thrombocytopenia. With this background, we'll go through some case scenarios and try to understand various aspects of thrombocytopenia or fever. This is a child who had fever but uh, no focus of infection, no rash or bleeding tendency. There is no organomegaly. Clinically, child was looking very simple, benign viral fever, but automated counter has given a normal WBC count, differentials, hemoglobin, but platelet count is given as 45,000. The big warning has been sent to the pediatrician. CRP is negative, NS1 is negative. If we happen to see a thrombocytopenia given by automated counter, but clinically not correlatable, we can think of two possibilities. It is called a spurious thrombocytopenia. Either it may be a small clot in the sample because of that, uh, the counter is uh, counting it very low. Or uh, second is EDTA induced uh, problems, which is happening in vitro. Here you can see two smears. One is you can see the clumps, platelet clumps. If the, even if the count is 48,000, we see so much of clumps, we need not worry because the count must be definitely normal. This is platelet satellitism. So all the platelets are uh, surrounding the neutrophils. When you see this, it will give a lot of reassurance. So the counter, the threat created by counter will be nullified. If somebody can see a smear and found these clumps of platelets, it will definitely reassure. So what is how to overcome the problem? Overcoming the problem, you have to use a heparin or citrate uh, containing sample. This will solve the problem of EDT related in vitro antibody causing agglutination. When Sudhagar asked me, he said that don't talk anything about dengue. So I just given only a picture, a fever with epitomegaly, purpura, right side pleural fleet, tonic case test. You can see the small bruises at the, at the site of applying the BP cuff. This child came with the severe dengue on day six with the bleeding, encephalopathy, and, and the refractory shock. Of course, fever with thrombocytopenia, definitely we have to think about dengue and then only we can go beyond that. This is a simple approach to a child with Thrombocytopenia given in one of the articles published in IDPP two months back. So step one is 
look at a history and examination. As I said earlier, it's no shortcut. Look at a CBC and peripheral smear plays a major role to find out other cell lines are okay or not, how the platelets in the peripheral smear. Then step two is clinically we decide whether it's a sick child. Sick child means a child with infection, having shock, respiratory distress, or respiratory irregularities, or alter level of consciousness, or malignancy, child coming with severe failure, thrombocytopenia, and purpura, HLH, hemorrhagic giving syndrome, presenting with the renal uh, impairment. So well child means a child who has got, does not have any serious critical signs, will be a spurious thrombocytopenia or maybe due to self-limiting viral fevers or drug-induced. Step three, we have to decide whether we are planning for bone marrow evaluation and involved in the hematology consultation. It is definitely needed when we consider bone marrow failure as evident by bi or, tri bi or pancytopenia, leukemia, lymphoma, or HLH. But whatever the etiology, even before we reach the etiology, if you want to start on steroid in a child with thrombocytopenia, bone marrow aspiration is mandatory before starting even oral steroids. So these, some of these questions will help us to analyze the problem. Is it true or spurious that smear study can solve this? Then we look at a child and ask whether it's a well child or sick child. Sick child is usually having an alter level of consciousness, shock and respiratory distress and bleeding. Clinically susceptible by history and clinically we can suspect many things by history and examination. Fever, epitomegaly, flush child, dengue, Eshkar will indicate scrub, paler, purpura, bone pain to indicate leukemia. Persistence of a trauma set up in a very sick child, even after seventh or eighth day of dengue, you think of HLH. A child presenting with thrombocytopenia, renal failure, maybe a HVS. So many clinical features will tell us and narrow down the possibility to one side. If more than one cell line is affected, like two or three cell affected, means more likely to be in dengue, aplastic anemia, AL, and HLH. These are the situations where you have more than one cell line is affected. Any focused lab, like bone marrow aspiration, dengue or other tropical infection screening will narrow down and fix the diagnosis. This is a 15-year-old boy, came with one-week fever, headache, body pain, pedal edema and melina, referred for low platelet count. He had a very a good clue to tell us that he is suffering from scrub typhus, escarnia, the right ear low, febrile pedal edema, mild tachypnea, decreased presence on right side, hepatosplenomegaly. Look at the investigation, thrombocytopenia is there, but PCV is not high. Neutrally leukocytosis, CRP positive in contrast to what we see in dengue, bilateral plural feed and haziness. Minimal free fluid abdomen, IgM Malaysia rickets was positive. This is a child with uh, strep typhus. This is one of the early cases we saw from 2009. The problem here is he started clinically improving. Fever settled and shock is improved. Everything is settling down. But platelet count remains very, very low. 30,000, 45,000, 55,000. We are unable to discharge him. When I discussed the pathology, pathology found out that this fellow has got a lot of platelet aggregates are there. Plenty of platelet aggregates. But this thrombocyte, this is one of the bedside tests to, it's not given any, any clearly in any book, but we, we have observed that many of them has <coughs> these, uh, platelet aggregates causing thrombocytopenia. It's one form of spurious thrombocytopenia. So the child was, uh, smear showed uh, plenty of aggregates, treated the doxycycline, and child completely recovered in a span of one week time. So again, smear plays a major role. These are all the uh, uh, ishkar in different places, left axilla, umbilicus, scrotum behind the ear, back of neck and inguinal region. So now in every child, we have to strip the child, giving privacy for the child under the screen to look for any scar in covered areas. Otherwise, we will miss a big diagnosis. This is a four-year-old boy, he came with fever and limb pain. I'm going faster because only 17 minutes time has been given for me. Limb pain for a week time. The limb pain was a little alarming. Paler and limb pain which should be very, very alarming, particularly night pains. And he had paler, purpuric spots, cervical and axillary lymph nodes, and epidosplenomegaly. WBC count was high, 35,000. Hemoglobin platelets were low. The peripheral smear of the child showed the following feature. You don't see not many platelets are seen, large cells. You can compare a normal cell here. It's a normal cell. In the normal cell, at least half of the nucleus is surrounded by cytoplasm. Here you see only a thin rim of cytoplasm. So we should, not only we, our young colleagues also should get trained to look at a peripheral smear to identify blast cells in this. It's a very, very useful test, simple, useful test to make a big diagnosis. The child came with five days fever, septic shock, altered consciousness, respiratory distress, and low saturation, recurring intubation, purpuric spots, neutrally leukocytosis, so blood culture is grown, gram negative bacteria. You can look at the both legs showing multiple purpuric spots. Sepsis presenting with the shock and thrombocytopenia. This is an unfortunate child, 12 year old girl. Fever for four days, she came with alter level of consciousness, hypotensive shock. She was deeply ectric. You can see the paler, subcontinental bleed, purpuric spots, low GCS, 
clinically fitted with the malaria, severe malaria. Urine color also confirmed that raised bilirubin, raised urea creatine, hypoglycemia, hemoglobinuria, INNG metabolic acidosis, a smear showed falciparum gametocytes and prophesites. Child was treated with IV artisanate ventilated support after 30 hours before it succumbs to the illness. This is an eight-year-old girl, came with one month of fever. You can look at the baby, look at the child. She has a subory dermatitis, exophthalmos, ear discharge, hepatosplenomegaly. Now, you clear that you are coming to a narrow down the possibilities. WBC 14,000, hemoglobin low, platelet low. And X-ray skull and CT showed well-demarcated osteolytic lesion in the skull. Diagnosis of Langer, Langer Hansel histiocytosis, LCH. Nowadays, uh, many studies are available, biopsy, histopathology, and uh, histochemistry studies are available to prove the diagnosis. This is a 10-year-old boy admitted to severe dengue with IgM positive. He continued to have fever beyond one week. So generally, we expect the child with dengue to expect, uh, recover by day 7 to day 8, but he didn't show much improvement. Fever persisted, hepatosplenomegaly, ascites, and mild jaundice. WBC, hemoglobin, and platelet starts falling. Of course, PC would have been raised further earlier. Now, came down to normal, started falling down. SGBT, CPT were raising, LDH was high. So, this gave us three differential diagnoses. This picture on day 7 and 8, where we expect the child with dengue to improve, the child is worsening with falling platelet count, falling WBC, and falling hemoglobin. Three possibilities, maybe a secondary sepsis, coexisting tropical infection or infection associated with HLH. Blood culture, no growth, other tropical screening was negative, ferritin was increasing. We made a possibility of hyperferritinemic HLH. You can see the counts are, uh, platelet counts are going down, ferritin is going up, other investigations were negative. The child was managed with uh, um, IVID, child completely recovered. This again, the child, five-year-old girl with vomiting, fever, abdominal pain, hematuria, uh, had decreased urine output, gross hematuria of five days duration. There is no history of loose stools. Paler and perpetual spots that very striking. Urine albin showed four plus and plenty of RBCs. You can see the raised creatinine, hemoglobin 5.5, platelets 24,000. Peripheral smear you can see in the next slide showed a microangiopathy hemolytic anemia. LDHSY, retic count was high. So this fit in with the diagnosis, hemorrhage edemic syndrome. The child was undergoing PD. Just before connecting the ventilator, the child is being bad. You can see the perfect spots here. This is a recent events, a five-day fever, 12-year-old boy. Um, he had uh, dengue in as negative, thrombocytopenia, bleeding PV. Everything was looking like dengue earlier. But his CRP was positive. Inflammatory markers are raised. His CRP positive. 154, ESR was 78, WBC count 6,400, look at the uh, lymphocyte 14. So lymphocytic uh, neutral ratio is very low. COVID RTPs are negative, but COVID antibodies are positive. D-dimer uh, 3.4, platelet count was low, ferritin was high. CT, in fact, he came with abdominal pain. Our initial diagnosis was appendicitis, or enteric fear because our right leg was a tenderness and heliate thickening. Ileal thickening, free fluid abdomen, cultures in dengue and tropical fever screen is not contributory. It was looking like an MIC like pictures and COVID antibody positive, treated with the antibiotic and IVAG, child improved. Again, come back to the original where we started. Step one, history and examination. Step two, see whether sick child or well child. Step three, we see the smear and decide whether we have to do bone marrow study or not. So what are all the things you will elicit in the history? A fever, diarrhea, child coming with thrombocytopenia, more likely to be HVS. Bone pain, particularly nocturnal bone pain, you should point to the possibility of uh, leukemia, particularly in child has got splenomegaly and paler. If the child is already on drug like heparin or carbamazepine, valprate, the drug-induced purpura also we should consider. Hepatomegaly, fever, five days, dengue, conjunctival congestion, myalgia, ictris, paler, hepatosplenomegaly, you should point to the Tropical infection like malaria, scrub type, malaria, leptospirosis. Of course, SCAR will point to the diagnosis of scrub typhus. Heptospirosis, paler, bone tain. I'm repeatedly stressing many of the time, child with coming with seven to 10 days fever will turn out to be leukemia. Puffiness of face, hypertension, following diarrhea, dysentery, which you think of HVS. Saboria, exophthalmos, heptospirosis, cancer, LCH. Of course, investigations, baseline investigations, of course, always it is helpful, lymphocytic. Leukocytosis, anemia, thrombocytopenia, blossoms in the smear, suggesting leukemia, raised urea creatine, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, microsclematuria, HVS, 
Why is it that we always should raise the possibility of HLH whenever a child is not recovering by one week in dengue or other infections? It should be supported by high transaminases, high triglycerides, and uh, low ferrit, low uh, fibrinogen. Osteolytic lesion in the skull will give a very simple diagnosis from a very simple investigation like X-ray skull. Specific investigation like bone marrow aspiration, serology, blood culture, histopathology, and immunocytic chemistry and flow cytometry will be very useful when you point out to a particular diagnosis. Some co lab combinations are very useful. For example, thrombocytopenia as a part of bicytopenia, relatively stable child in the early phase could be suggested for dengue. When the child becomes sick, we'll think of HLH and AL. Thrombocytopenia plus transaminitis. It is a very good indicator that whenever you see a child with fever, thrombocytopenia and transaminitis, it points to narrow diagnosis a tropical infection. Among the tropical infection, we see low counts and negative CRP it is dengue, and all the other it will be lepto, typhoid, and strep typhus. CRP will be raised, and the total count also will be raised. Whenever there is multiple system involvement, as we saw in a child with severe malaria, encephalopathy, renal failure, anemia, hemoglobinuria. Um, metabolic acidosis, when you see multiple system involvement, there are only two situations is possible. One is uh, malaria, severe malaria, another is child developing infection associated HLH. Most of these situations in smear will be very useful in the early part. Bone marrow aspiration will be useful in later part of the diagnosis, clinical diagnosis. I'm coming to the last few slides. These are all, I given five smears. Each smear will give you the diagnosis. If you see a child, Fever subsided, but persistent thrombocytopenia, the platelet aggregates, it is indicative of scrub typhus. Child with jaundice, hemoglobinuria, encephalopathy, anemia, renal failure, this gametocytes will show the diagnosis. Child with diarrhea, recovering diarrhea, developed paler thrombocytopenia and renal failure. Cystocytes, helmet shaped shells will give a diagnosis. Here, leukemia. Here, the platelet clump and satellitism. So, what we understand is a single most investigation which will be able to pick up a very major diagnosis of peripheral smear. I think we are not training our students more on this aspect. Every student should be familiar to this. Coming back, coming back to the last slide, fever, thrombocytopenia, transaminitis, narrows the differential diagnosis, but shortcut never works. We have to go through these steps. Focus history, problem oriented examination, basic laboratory, specific laboratory, differential diagnosis. Any child with Tropical infection, HLH, and AL has to be considered as common causes. If there's a prolonged illness, evaluate for HIV. Whenever we plan to start on steroid, bone marrow aspiration is mandatory, irrespective of the diagnosis we make. So I'm looking at the net for once a week. There is a lot of di di uh, directions we given for once a week. Once a week, you clean the toilet. Once a week, clean the kitchen. Once a week, you dye your hair. But I feel that once a week, we should visit the laboratory to look at a smear, even a normal smear or anemia or leukemia or HES. We'll develop that habit. If after the lecture, if our students pick up the habit, I'll be very happy. Thank you very much. Reaching a diagnosis by simple investigation is possible with uh, the step based approach. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. We'll go through the questions. Uh, 